signs of superiority or inferiority. As Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said more than 1400 years ago, no white person is better than a black person, and no black person is better than a white person, and no person is better than any other person on account on their race, of their race. And as, a, as our brother Malcolm X, God bless his soul, taught, anti-black racism is a moral disease that must be confronted and cleansed from the heart of America in order for our country to have a chance of healing and living up to the claim of liberty and justice for all. As civil rights activists, as Americans, as human beings, and as Muslims, we are individually and collectively committed to fighting anti-black racism, whether it appears in a family, a community, a society, or even at the highest level of government authority. May God grant us success in our efforts to promote justice for black Americans and for all. Next, we'll hear from Sister Fitra Mohammed of the Nation's Mosque here in Washington, D.C. With God's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. I greet you, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. I serve the one who created everything in the heavens and, in the, and on earth, and who cares about us all, whose revelations directed all the prophets to teach about God and the day of judgment who raised his messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a mercy to all mankind. My name is Fitra Muhammad. I am Director of National and International Affairs at Masjid Muhammad, the nation's mosque. I am speaking as a woman and a mother of faith, created with the inherent ability to feel and respond to the pain of so many unnecessary deaths of our children. The voice of George Floyd was the cry of a son in distress calling for help from all mothers. Imam Warith the Deen Muhammad, may he be in the gardens of righteousness, said, mother and women represent the whole of humanity. George Floyd's voice was a call of consciousness. There is a Hebrew phrase which says, my cup runneth over. I have more than what I need. People all over the world are crying, enough is enough. My people, African Americans were born in a society that never intended for them to be free. Driven to escape the cruel life of bondage, they resisted, persisted, and miraculously survived. There are countless numbers of recorded instances of mutinies aboard slave ships, countless attempted escapes, countless bobby bloody revolts on plantations. Oppression, injustice, and ignorance is a crime against all of humanity. It is a burden on every soul. You have those who ask the validity, the question of removing the Confederate statues that were created as heroic figures to be honored in history, when in fact, the Confederate statues and flag represent a racist mentality 
willing to die to protect the status quo, the establishment of buying, selling, and owning men, women, and babies as human commodity. If not now, when is the time to right the wrongs? If not now, when will we learn that separating babies from their mothers and then caging them is a shameful act? The judgment is coming. If not now, when is the time to stamp out wickedness that wants to steal the innocence born into a society of either black suffering or white privilege? Racism is reinforced by white divine images. Imam Wadifudi Muhammad, may he be in the garden of paradise, said, what would happen if people sat in churches throughout the world for centuries with the image of an African-American man as their savior? He further said, Whenever a people give you their images in worship, racism is in that religion. He warned of the danger that would affect the psychological minds of African Americans seeing a white image of Jesus as God. Erecting divine images of any color are against all the Abrahamic traditions. Our religious leaders have failed us. Read your scriptures. This is a great day. People of faith are succeeding to overcome their differences and achieve living together in peace and harmony as God intended for all of us, for all of humanity. The protesters are multicultural, multi-ethnic, and multi-generational. Corporate America, community, and government leaders are speaking up, supporting and enacting revolutionary change within their power. This is a great day. This is the day of reckoning. We must rise above the messages in the schemes of Satan that keep us divided, confused, and suffering. Messages that cloud our ability to face truth, our ability to reason, our ability to believe in a better human life that shares empathy, understanding, and compassion towards each other. We must vote to end the evils that haunt us all. With love and respect, all things are possible. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Fitra. Next, we'll hear from Zainab Chowdhury, a CARES Director of Maryland Outreach. Assalamu alaikum, bismillah rahman rahim Today is a very important day for many reasons. Today we mark one month since George Floyd was murdered by police. And in that time, we've seen an uprising across the country. An uprising that's fueled by grief, by anger, by outrage at the injustices that continue to perpetuate against our black brothers and sisters around the country and around the world. As we mark this occasion by affirming our commitment to standing up for justice and equality for all communities, especially black communities in our country. We can't ignore the legacy of systemic racism and white supremacy in our country. We have an obligation, each and every single one of us, to stand up and to continue to challenge the forces that pit us against one another based on race, religion, or ethnicity. I am proud to stand here with Sister Fitra and Imam Jihadi and our allies and our leaders around the country, inshallah, to continue to pledge to fight against white supremacy and challenge the forces that continue to divide us. May God unite all of us and continue to give us the strength, the courage, and the insight to continue to speak truth to power and demand change in the halls of power 
and on the streets within our cities. Jazakumullah mm -hmm. here. Thank you, Sister Zainab. And to conclude, uh, we'll hear from Imam Johari Malik, who's a prominent uh, Imam in the Washington, D.C. area and nationally. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. Today is a significant day for all of us in that it is a day where we are standing before the halls of Congress with the leadership of CARE saying that those of us who are concerned about the issues of police violence, that it is time to take a stand and ask Congress to act, not in Washington, D.C. or in Maryland or Virginia, but throughout all of the states of the United States of America, to stand to ask the government to fulfill its commitment to its people, to provide freedom, justice, and equality for all of its citizens. The reality today is because just as in the past, we have experienced a lack of government oversight by the federal government. We have seen abuses in local and city governments with its policing, just as Dr. King during the civil rights movement needed the federal government to act in order to provide safety and security for its citizens against local policing. Today, CARE is put forward along with other allies, black, white, red, yellow, Christian, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, Sikh, Jain, Zoroastrian, calling on everyone to demand from our government that the federal government take action to protect its citizens, to know today the issue of Black Lives Matter is fundamental because until Black Lives Matter, nobody's life matters. Those who can be exploited because of their race or their gender, because of those issues, they lie at the feet of the civil rights of every American. And if we want to raise that issue, we need to raise the condition of the protections under law for blacks who live in this country. As a Muslim, we're asking God Almighty to establish the kind of justice that God would be pleased with. And to know, as Thomas Jefferson said, under the conditions of writing about the Constitution of the United States, he said, I fear that the hand of God will not rest until we do something about establishing justice for those Africans who were enslaved in America. Today, many of us are saying we might breathe easy today because you and I are not the ones with the foot of the government on our necks. I want us to redouble our efforts to say that I cannot breathe until black people can breathe. I cannot breathe until Latinos who are uh, subject to immigration exploitation until they can breathe. I can't breathe until social justice is equal for everyone in every state of the United States. Going back to the days on this unfurled banner of Emmett Till, to say that if there isn't justice for everyone, there's justice for no one. And so we ask everyone to join today with the Council on American Islamic Relations to stand for justice in this nation that God might forgive us, to allow us the opportunity to right our wrongs, that we might be a justice-based society, a society with liberty and justice for all. If you agree with me, wherever you are, in whatever way you believe, to say amen, that God might bless us today, that we put an end to racist and police violence in America. Assalamu alaikum. I want you to know for the record I'm using hand sanitizer provided by CARE. And, I, and we're all maintaining distance. Well, that concludes our news conference. Uh, I neglected in the beginning to say in the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful, so I'll say it here at the end. Uh, and if anyone uh, would like to continue receiving CARE's uh, emails, go to CAIR.com and register. And 
Thank you for coming. Good job.